have to give your brain and tongue muscles time to develop and build up. So we do a daily quiz. And over the past three years on student reviews, <coughs> they have said that they appreciate the daily quiz. Um, it's, it's easier to manage and to uh, respond to than weekly quizzes or um, monthly exams. So we do a daily quiz that takes about 10 minutes and then we go on to the new work of the day. I've tended to settle into an encounter a day. Some encounters take a little less time and some encounters take a little more time but on average it tends to be an encounter a day and a unit in maybe a week or a little more. And if there's time remaining at the end of the period, I, I'll do some divergent activity. And divergent means um, I'm trying to find out what's in their heads. So uh, it's a way of dumping everything that's in their heads out. So I see what's cum accumulating. So a tip, a very favorite divergent activity is I have um, many visitors to my classroom, um, other teachers, uh, visiting scholars who want to come in and sit in. So I'll bring them up and sit them down and have the students ask as many questions as they can come up with. So the questions could run to 20, 30 questions and I write the, um, the answers, single words on the blackboard in English based on what the, the answers are. So age, 34, teacher, from Xi'an, that sort of thing. And um, it's a good way of bringing together everything that we've done in the past. And then at the end of the period, I'll hand out homework assignment and that signals the end of the class. So here's a sample lesson plan. Um, I, the first one, Joey, that's a Monday. Uh, September 10th. I just put that there to give you a little bit of um, context for what we're doing. So uh, you'll see that we're working on, um, and uh, this is a uh, unit two, I think, um, about in about personal background. Um, so you'll see that um, we do we did a warm up, and then we we um, <clears throat> worked on encounter two. Uh, and um, then we did encounter three and there's the homework for that night. So the homework is always to review the, the, the three enc the encounters we've been doing in that unit, review it and then write a few characters. I require uh, students to turn in a page of writing every day. So typically it's write a few characters, maybe three to five. Um, and this one says, plus any others you want to practice, plus any two sentences and characters. And later on in the, in the semester, it might be any three sentences and characters, any four sentences and characters, and turn it in. And I grade those and turn those, get, get those back. So you'll see that for the Tuesday, that's the one I was going to focus on, the, the, the encounter three uh, on the Monday had been about birthdays, right? So. Our warm-up activity on Tuesday is I ask the class every um, line up by birthday to warm up. So we always do low left, right? So the the um, January people go on the left, and all all the way to December on the right. 你的生日几月几号？我的生日一月七号，我的生日二月五号， and they line up like that, and. So that's the warm-up activity, and um, in this case, I guess we hadn't finished Encounter 3 the previous day. Uh, 2.26 was uh, still outstanding, so we did that, and then we did the quiz, and then we went on to Encounter 4. And then for the um, end of class activity, since we still had a little bit of time left over, we did character writing circles, and that is generally, I have students sit in small groups of say three to four in a group and um, everybody has a sheet of paper and we begin 
in since it's early in the semester, we might begin by writing a simple sentence, something like "你的生日是几月几号." Uh, and first student, everybody would write "你" and then pass it to the right, and then somebody would you 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 see somebody else's writing and correct it, work with them to correct it. If if it needs correcting, then you write "the" and then pass it again, and then uh, write the third round. You write "sheng" and then pass it again. So um, it's writing characters and sh working with your classmates at the same time. And by doing it together, um, they realize that writing is for sharing, and it puts a little pressure on them to be a they want to be able to write well because everything they write, other people are going to look at. So then, then that's the end of class, and then I hand out that night's uh, homework. Uh, you can also email it to them. Um, review, read all grammar notes, uh, FY and FYIs in this unit. Write those characters plus any plus two sentences of characters. Turn it in. Um, in other, um, in homework, I might also ask them to uh, view the unit episode and the cultural notes. So the next day's quiz is based on the homework for the night before. So the next day's Wednesday's quiz is going to be from Encounters 1 to 4. Uh, it'll have something about the grammar notes, FYI, and those, those characters. So the homework dictates the quiz the next day. Um, at this point, uh, if you have any questions, could you type them in in the box and um, I'll answer at the end of this part of the webinar. Okay, and here are a couple sample daily quizzes. I know um, there are sample quizzes up on the um, Encounters resource uh, website. Um, I've taught using Encounters for three years now, and what's up on the website is the other quizzes I used the first year. I have a completely different set the second year, and I'm using a completely different set this year as well. I'd be happy to share them with anybody who wants, but here's uh, some examples. This is from, I guess, um, uh, so this is not that long ago. Uh, I think we're in a much later unit. This is this is these are two tests I used just recently, and typically uh, a quiz I ask them to write in pinyin and or hanzi um, to see if they know how to say things. Some students prefer to write in hanzi in characters because they are unsure about tones and such. So. To write statements about when you or someone you knew, know does any three of the following activities, and this is go to work, go to school, eat breakfast, come home, uh, get out of work, and you no, know, get out of school, come home, and uh, get out of work and come home. The a characteristic of encounters is that we have a lot of vocabulary in every unit, and we don't expect them to know every vocabulary item. There's too much. But we want them to um, learn the ones that are most useful to them. So in the quizzes, I almost always give them some choice. So there's uh, six possible vocabulary items, and I'm asking them to pick any three that they want to write about. And then the statements can vary. Different people might want to say different things. Something that is a best practice these days is to allow for differentiated instruction. So some students have more background, they can say more. Some students are just beginning, they say less. But all they have to do is write a coherent statement that uses three of those following activities in order to get full credit. My, my, my quizzes tend to be worth um, 10 points each. And then the second one in this case is um, is reading. So I had assigned um, two or three of the reading uh, dialogues in the back of the unit. And so this is based on those readings. So answer one of those questions. I asked them to write in pinyin only so they don't just copy the characters. Uh, and so they, if they answer one of them in pinyin, that's full credit. 
And then in this case, I'm asking them to write one of the following terms in Hanzi. Um, sometimes I ask them, like in the next quiz, I ask them to write a sentence using at least one of the following. Or, or sometimes that last character qu question will be, write anything you want to in characters. Write a sentence, anything you want to. Just as a way to see where they're at in, in characters. So the next, the next day's quiz is similar. Look at the items below. U.S. prices are provided. Make um, make some sentences about them using Hans' opinion. Um, make sure at least one is comparative. So they might say, um, "Shui bi tang kui," something like that. Uh, and again, there is a lot of option. So the students' answers will, will range all across the board. And um, Actually, something that you could do is um, use student answers on um, on quizzes and use it as a uh, as a brainstorming. Because you know, if you just make a list of all the students' answers, they'll be completely different, and it'll be very uh, wide ranging. So those are sample daily quizzes. Um, some sample homework assignments. Uh, uh, this the first one is from day one, the first day of the class. Um, something I've done was gave everybody in the class nicknames. Um, I find that if you give them real Chinese names, nobody uses them. Names are too hard. Real Chinese names are too um, too hard for the students to remember. But nicknames like Xiao Hong and Mao Mao and San San and stuff like that is useful terms. Uh, there's a list of uh, sample nicknames on the uh, Encounters website. Um, so, and by the third or fourth week, uh, students tend to start using each other's nicknames. Anyway, so day one, familiarize yourself with some of the nick. Memorize your Chinese nickname. Familiarize yourself with the nicknames of some of your colleagues. Review. Um, introductory unit encounter one memorize the number zero to ten view the episode for the introductory unit so that's uh, um, I'm as assuming that it'll take them anywhere between a half an hour maybe even 15 minutes to two hours to do the homework it, it varies depending on background ability available time so in the second week I changed the term homework to so yeah and um, again, you see, so like listen to the unit rap. That's something they could do at home. Okay, write the characters. Turn in a page of writing, including the sentences. 你好，你叫什么名字？你姓什么？再见. In characters. Okay. So and then a little later, by um, this is week. Uh, I think I don't, I don't remember what week it is. Maybe week three or four. Um, 作业 has become a. Uh, so yeah, and pinyin has become so yeah, and characters, but it's the same sort of thing. Review the review what we did this we're doing this week. View the unit episode. Read grammar bits. Write these three. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, do we answer the questions now or later? Okay. Um, I'm trying to see the characters, see the questions. Do you, okay, Trish asks, um, do you teach traditional or simplified characters of both? That is a um, characteristic, a special characteristic of encounters. Um, the U.S. De, U.S. What is it? Defense Department, Defense Language Institute. Um, I think two years ago began requiring that all students learn both forms. Encounters teaches both traditional and simplified at the same time. And in three years, I've found no students that protested that. Learning to read both forms is not a big deal. It's a big deal for native speakers who grew up with only one form and have a, re a lot of resistance to the other form. St learners who begin with a blank slate, when you introduce both forms together, they look at the two forms and they say that only 20% of it, it is of it is different, and it's quite easy to 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 learn. Like on on the page we're on, Qing, 
you know, that carry the simplification of the yan zi pang, um, it doesn't take them very long to um, to get used to that. So we require that they learn to understand, to read both forms, and they pick one or the other to write. And I've always found that about half of my students pick to write fan ti, and the other half pick jian ti for all kinds of reasons. You know, I want to do business with China. I'm going to use simplified. My grandmother is from Taiwan. I want to use traditional. Uh, I like the way the traditional looks. They, they have different reasons, but it, but it tends to be about half and half. And to be fair, I look at some of their writing, <clears throat> and sometimes they, they, they jump back and forth. Uh, I have several students who prefer fanti, but sometimes they can only remember the jianti because it's so, so much simpler. So they write the jianti, and I accept that too. How do students do FYI and grammar independently? Uh, I generally ask them to do F, to read the FYIs and the grammars at home for uh, for homework, and um, and uh, in some cases we talk about it in class. In some cases we don't. Um, uh, in a lot of um, teachers now talk about grammar only when there's a problem because when you when the students do these activities they just sort of intake the grammar and it's very natural you don't have to talk about it it it's like children don't have to talk about grammar they just use it but sometimes in the class somebody will say what is that the why does it keep appearing so in the hong the bai the that that one um so then we'll stop and do a pop-up grammar session, and uh, the um, the uh, the grammar bits are helpful for that. Or, or <clears throat> I've actually developed a few powerpoints. Um, uh, for example, um, resultative compounds. Uh, once a, stu a student said, "I don't get resultative compounds," and so I developed a, comp uh, uh, a little exercise PowerPoint for that. And after that, they had no questions. So unless they have questions, we don't worry about grammar. OK, question. My students like pictures to give them cues for learning vocabularies. Where can I find pictures to accompany your vocabularies from e each unit? I understand that we're going to be putting a lot of the um, pictures from the textbook on the website as um, teacher resources. Otherwise, um, I know it's probably breaking copyright um, regulations, but if you go to Google and hit images and hit anything you want. There's amazing images. I, I use it every day. Um, like on the sample quizzes that I showed you, all those little pictures are from Google images. Um, I, don't, I, I don't put them online because we can't publish them. <laughs> but um, when we use them in class, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Uh, OK, so let's go on. I like your idea of character writing circles. I use a similar activity in my class. Basically, they do pair work by using a small whiteboard. Most of them are doing OK, but I'm only stuck at a small number of students who are never able to write most characters when it's their turn. I assign some character worksheet, but it doesn't seem to work on them. Not everybody, but only a couple. Uh, yeah, the same is true in my class. I have a. a a, a lovely young lady who says she wants to be a Chinese major, but but she turns in you know uh, homework assignments with characters written twenty times. She cannot remember them. When it comes the time to write it on a quiz, she cannot remember them, and she just she draws a little frowny face and says, "I can't remember them." Well, maybe it um, it uh, takes more um, in our summer. Institute, we, we're, we're working with TPRS, uh, to Teaching Proficiency Through Reading and Storytelling, and they say that you shouldn't expect students to remember anything until they've seen it 50 times. So maybe, you know, for these couple of students who can't, can't learn characters, um, they need to encounter them not 20 times, not 50 times, maybe it takes 100 times. And so for those particular students, uh, I have also have a couple in my class. They can't write the ones that are assigned on the, on the quiz. And I, and I tell them, write anything. What do you remember? 
If you can't remember these, what can you remember? Um, and there are some that they can remember, so I give them partial credit. Um, and, you know, so they're still passing. Uh, and then, um, uh, LA, uh, okay, I would like to see more of your daily quizzes. Uh, yeah, I have all my daily quizzes saved on my laptop. Uh, I don't know, I guess I could give them to Yale uh, at the end of the semester and they'll put them up online, um, including all the illegal little <laughs> little graphics. Well, maybe unless somebody um, hits us up for a copyright infringe infringement, um, uh, we, we can just go ahead and use it. What do you use after Encounters curriculum? You mean after the year is over? Uh, encounters uh, last at least a year at the college level. For some people, I understand it lasts three semesters at the college level. At the high school level, it lasts at least two years because high school students tend to go slower and a lot of what we do at home in the college level tends to be done at, in, class, in classrooms at the high school level. There is currently a book that I wrote previously called um, Exploring in Chinese that's intended for the um, second level and it's much uh, less, um, it's not as beautiful as Encounters, but um, it's the same approach. It's vid short videos followed by um, ex exercises and lots of um, learner-centered meaningful activities. So you could do that. But we are also talking about developing a second level for encounters. Um, that would involve going back to China to do more filming and stuff like that. So yeah, th that we hope will be coming up. So I'm going on to the next slide. This is something that um, I've just started using this year and it's sort of spread like wildfire in my department. Um, the idea is that um, near peer role models, that sometimes a student can teach another student better than a teacher can, or a textbook can, or a video can. Somehow, when they're talking to other people like them, um, their peers can explain things or use things in ways that are digestible to them. So now, I, almost every day, I do a little bit of co-teaching, which means teaching each other. So you see in this picture, um, there's students teaching each other and the teachers are intermingled. They, they walk among the students. And what's on the slide is um, just some samples of co-teaching cards. So underneath the picture, for example, um, You know, I print those out and I, it, it looks a little bigger than that, so that's a, you know, a full sheet of paper, print them out, cut them up, so there's one per student. So when a student gets a card, they look at it, they may not be able to read it. So first they have to figure it out. Either by looking in the textbook or asking somebody. But once they figure out what it is, they're the expert in that sentence. So then they walk around the room and they test all their, all their classmates. So the classmates have to look at their card and say, Ni jiao, and then they can tell them, Shama. They become an expert. So every student is an expert in at least one thing, and they, and they read everybody else's, and that way become expert. So in this particular, Ni jiao shama means Ni jiao junar. <clears throat> the other thing they had to do was, the, uh, these were matched with answers. Wo jiao xiao bai. Uh, no, so they match them up and stuff like that. Um, in the upper right hand corner, um, th that, that is vocabulary. Um, there's a lot of vocabulary in that unit. Um, and so they don't have to memorize all of them, but I want them to become familiar with them. So I give them, gave them first the um, vocabulary in pinyin and they can co-teach each other. If you want, you can move on to give them the vocabulary in Hanzi and they can co-teach each other again. So like the bottom right corner, that's vocabulary in Hanzi and they just walk around the room. Uh, you know, oh, that's your mama, oh, that's, uh, this is your family, and the baba, fuqing, that sort of thing, fumu. And uh, I just finished the, the, uh, the bit of the unit on money. 
So I had uh, real money from, from many different countries in many different denominations. I handed out one per, per student. And so they actually held the real money and says, 这是十块钱人民币, 这是一百块钱台币, 这是一百块钱港币, that sort of thing. Um, but it's very empowering to have students become become expert and tell all this all their classmates what it is. You know, somehow it it, it boosts their confidence. Um, when you assign, what is this? Um, this 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 one above. Oh, okay. When you assign students to work together and do a character writing exercise, do you notice that some student uh, would probably do all the work for their particular group. I mean, one student write out all the characters may just jeopardize the chance for other students to learn during that activity time. Um, actually, um, I hand, if there's in a small group, every student has a piece of paper. And every student has to write on that piece of paper. So for example, if they're writing, 你的电话号码是多少? So everybody writes 你 and then passes it to the right, right? And then everybody writes the and passes it to the right. And the idea is that if the person that passed you a piece of paper wrote a character with a mistake on it, you have to work with them to correct it before you pass it to the right. So there's no, there's no one student in the group that has the assignment for everybody. Everybody has an assignment. Um, uh, on on the website of the University of Hawaii's Confucius Institute, there's a, um, a two-hour video by Mimi Matt called uh, Cooperative Learning Peer and Group Work. And she has lots of ideas on how you can do group work in which every student has a responsibility so nobody can slack out. Okay. So let's go to the next one. All right. So um, array of activities for students to engage students. Um, so in the book, there are um, a variety of activities. OK, so we're going to move on to, to, we've been handling uh, questions. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and send them in. We will respond. Otherwise, we will, I'm going to give the mic over to Tim. And um, he's going to talk about um, the exciting new developments for encounters. Hi, this is Tim Shea from Yale University Press, and I wanted to talk to you about uh, two new developments for the Encounters materials that are going to be coming out later this year and then later on in 2013. They both involve uh, Kia, and if you're not familiar with Kia, it's spelled Q-U-I-A, and you can go to their website at kia.com or books.kia.com. And the first development is an, an online workbook. We've received a lot of uh, feedback from instructors who say that they would like more um, exercises and practice for students than what is currently available in the Encounters program. So we're developing an online workbook with Kia. There's a demo available now, which um, you can see on your screen at the moment. And this is this is all fairly um, fairly rudimentary exercises because it does. Uh, does correspond to unit one so we will have the online workbook for student book one uh, the 11 units in it available in the summer and we'll be developing it over the next uh, several months but we'll keep you posted uh, what's nice about Kia is that it's all online and the students enter their information into a grade book and then you as the teacher have access to all of their um, all of the exercises they do, the answers they give. There are instructor graded questions, there are computer graded questions. It can be some of it can be for practice, some of it can be for for credit. So um, it, it, you can have uh, recordings such as uh, what you're seeing now on the screen where the student can record a, um, an answer to a question. There can be partner recordings where two students can record the answers to questions. So there's a lot to do. Uh, there will be a lot of different types of activities in the uh, Kia workbook when it's ready. Um, so we will also be sending um, an email out to all the attendees with uh, specific information and instructions about the Kia book 
and how to access this demo, which is now available. Um, as I said, the actual full Kia book for Student Book One will be available in the uh, summer so that you can use it in your courses for uh, beginning in September 2013. There will also be uh, video exercises in the workbook. So the other part of it is called Kia Web. And this is more of a, um, a collaborative effort where it's, it's, based, it's free to everyone. Um, students, it's free for students. Instructors pay um, a small fee to have it for a year, but Yale University Press is actually going to be um, providing the, the access to the adopters. We'll be taking care of um, the encounters adopters and, and you won't have to pay a fee to use the material. And what it is, is it's any instructor can create and post an activity, um, games, homework, quizzes that go, that could correspond directly to something in encounters or just be, you know, some kind of Chinese uh, language activity that you, you like to use in your class. And it becomes really a pool of resources and activities and exercises for everyone to use, um, to be shared. And then when, and there's also a gradebook feature in Kia Web. So you can actually use the exercises and have your students log in, um, get hooked up with you as, your, as their instructor, and then you can see their, um, the wor their work. The, the, the exercises and the capabilities of the, the Kia book, which is more of, a, um, uh, more of a standard online workbook where everything is, is uh, you know, created by the publisher, they tend to have, be more sophisticated and you have more options. But the Kia Web, which is free to everyone, is, is, is also very useful and will be very collaborative. That's something that we're going to be making available uh, very soon in December, so that you'll actually be able to use that for your courses uh, that start in January. And we encourage all instructors who are using Encounters um, to go ahead and uh, once you familiarize yourself with the Kia Web format to, you know, if you have activities that you've created yourself that you use in class to go ahead and create them online and share them and then they're also customizable if you create an exercise put it on the Kia web and other another encounters instructor decides to use it in their class they can also make changes to it if they want so we will also be um, creating some encounters related exercises for the Kia web so not only will we be creating the encounters online workbook um, which, as I said, will be available next summer, but we will be creating exercises and um, other content to get the Kia web started, and that'll be within the next month or so. So there will be, what our hope is that with people contributing and with Yale Press contributing, you know, there'll be a nice bank of, of exercises to give people more options um, for practice and homework and uh, reinforcement and, and those kinds of things. Um, I think that that pretty much does it. We, we really appreciate everyone joining the webinar. Uh, you asked a lot of great questions and we actually, this is, if, if Sydney didn't mention it, we did record this so we are going to be posting it on the Encounters website. So thank you very much and um, we will be in touch soon with information about the Kia book, the Kia web, and um, any other new developments with Encounters. Thanks very much.